So the special lung pulse, we're going to find our um, scaphoid bone, and we're going to find the junction between the, the tendon and the scaphoid, and we're going to slide our finger on this 45-degree um, angle, okay, moving towards uh, from like here's lung 9, here's pericardium 7, right? So we're kind of moving up in this direction and right over the bones, okay? So it's really a, um, a very light kind of pressure, and we can kind of rock our finger back and forth a little bit to access the entire length of the position, okay? And with this position, we, we start off with really just a very light surface touch, and then we're going to kind of move and start searching a little bit for where the principal impulse is most strongly felt, okay? And then we're searching the whole length of the artery to see what we find. Any questions on this one? Special, Special lung. And what are we supposed to do? Well, you should find a vessel, and remember, you should what you're supposed to feel is a normal pulse, but you know you're not going to. So you want to pick up the deviations, the qualities we that we're experiencing in this pulse. So you know, is it tense? Is it tight? Is it wiry? Is it choppy? Is it rough vibration? Is it reduced substance? Is it muffled? Whatever it is. So, and then you're going to note that in the um, section in the pulse record. Okay, so after we find um, the special lung position, um, we can look for, you know, generally from here, I go into the left distal position. So what I do with the left distal position is I take my middle, my index finger, and I put it between her thumb and forefinger, and I use my middle finger around the thumb, and my thumb in the, the back of her hand. And what that allows me to do is manipulate the thumb and the angle of the wrist, okay? Because what's very important about finding this position is you have to get under the scaphoid bone. And a lot of people are very tense. And this tendon right here can get really taut. And it makes it difficult to get under the bone as I roll, because you got to roll that hand to get under there. So as I control her wrist and her thumb, it allows me to find the angle, and it's different for everybody, so for her it's right here, to get that opening where my, th my finger can slide in to the scaphoid space, the space under the scaphoid bone, okay? And then I'm going to press in a little bit and kind of, I tend to go fairly deep in the beginning just to get a sense of the terrain, and then I back up and I kind of get a sense of where the pulse is, and once I find that principal impulse, I sit there for a little bit and I note the qualities and if there's any changing or intensity or amplitude or, or what else, okay? So from this position here, we slide back on top of the tendon itself. And we're very gently looking for uh, a very light pressure, trying to find a uh, vibration, tight quality, a pounding, whatever we find. We shouldn't find anything here, right? This is one of those places that we shouldn't find a quality. So we're, you know, is it slippery, right? If it's slippery, then I'm, then I'm looking at a, uh, a mitral valve prolapse, potentially, okay? So for, this is mitral valve, right on top of the tendon. Can you see? If I go like that? Just do left distal. That's the left distal. That's the heart. Okay. So from here, we I tend to kind of um, roll the wrist a little bit, and I slide up to find the neuropsychological position. Okay. Again, very slight, gentle pressure. Find the the space in the bone. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> I can see it happening. I just can't do it. It's kind of weighted down. Will you put it on the uh, table, maybe? There. Okay. Will you plug it back in a little bit? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Oh, will you hold it for me? Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> it's in the weird position. Okay. So finger right, trying to find that space in the depression. All right. From here, we can slide down into the large vessel. So that's. This large vessel position is very close to the special lung, which is really just sliding up a little further. So the large vessel is the, the little triangular space between the tendons here and, and the scaphoid. And we're going to take our finger and we're going to, generally using the corner of the finger, okay, or if your fingers are small enough, you can just put the whole thing straight 
<laughs> so finding that space, digging in on a 45 degree angle down and towards like uh, towards pericardium eight, okay? And then gently releasing our pressure and coming back up and seeing if we find any of that little pencil point kind of inflation hitting our fingertip, okay? So that's gonna be, so we did the special lung, we did the distal position, and, and I should have mentioned that while we're in the distal position, and finding our spot, we can ro roll and rock that finger a little bit to see if we find a pericardium in there, okay? Which we don't want to, okay? And so we did our neuropsychological up here, we did our mitral valve here, we did our large vessel down in here, okay? And so now we're gonna start looking at the diaphragms, okay? And so what we do here, and I'll try and keep the finger out of the way too much, we go into our, by our, our distal position, and I'm gonna roll down this way, find the middle position, and roll back up this way. So it's here, one, and two. And we're looking for kind of like a little bump where it kind of like pops our finger up higher, a little inflated quality. So one this way, and this way, okay? That's, that's the rolling technique. Is that how you want to stretch it? Do you do that over and over, or is it over? You, oh, I do it a few times. To check it, yeah. It wouldn't you just you want to do it? I probably go one, two, one, two, and I probably do that like probably four or five times to check, uh, confirm what I'm finding. Are you doing it with one finger? How I do it with two fingers, but if you do it with one finger, you can go like this and back. Okay. That's how we do. Right. That's you've been teaching it lately. I think Leon's been using his middle finger though, right? He's doing index. He's doing. No, Index now, he switches back and forth, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it depends on what's comfortable for you. So it's not, there's no right or wrong way. You just want to make sure you're able to assess um, the, the position, yeah. okay? And go so along you, with the beat, the heartbeat. Right, right. You time know. it. You got to time, time it to it the nice beat. Nice and slow and very superficial. Yeah. So, so that's the uh, diaphragm. Middle position, obviously, is right there. And you are going to assess your one, two, three depths of pressure. You're going to go to your ulnar liver engorgement, right? Standing your finger up and kind of curving all the way in. It's hard to see that one. Okay. The cord. Yeah, they should make the cords better. And then, so that's our ulnar liver engorged. The radial one that we didn't really talk about is right here. Same way you find the uh, mitral valve, okay? But we don't have to worry about it. The gallbladder, we stand the finger up and then we roll it straight down along the artery, okay? That's it, it's really simple. You just roll it straight down, okay? And you assess, you gotta find, is the pulse more medial, is it more lateral, okay? But that's where, it, how we do it. Here's our proximal position, our three depths, right? We also have our large intestine, so we're gonna stand <laughs> the finger up, and now roll it this way towards the hand. And what I do is, I open my hand up and I actually rest it right along, right over her wrist. Can you guys see that? Maybe, can you come towards this? Oh, maybe it's a little. Okay. So here, and I just roll it and then here, and just rest it there. And you want to be a little bit medial to the vessel and just rest, because otherwise your arms can get pretty tired. Large intestine. Okay. Pelvis, lower body, stand it up, it's just like gallbladder, and roll it down. Okay, just like that. And those are your positions on the left side. All right, the right side. The only differences um, on the right side would be that <laughs> when you're rolling, as you roll down, this is the pleura, and rolling up is the esophagus. And if they both meet, we've got diaphragm. Right. So back and forth, back and forth. But otherwise, you know, the distal position is found the same way, neuropsych is found the same way, okay, special lung pulse found the same way, okay, and then our, we have our uh, middle position, spleen stomach, we can roll just like we did with the ulnar engorged, right, to find our spleen complementary position. We roll downward for our stomach pylorus extension, okay, we go to the middle, roll distally for our small intestine, proximally for our pelvic lower body.